Hello. I'm really excited to talk about our topic today. It's one that's difficult for most of us to actually um, embrace. It's the biggest fear that most of us have, and that is death. We're going to talk today about death and dying. And then, of course, grieving has to be in there because that's just a part of it. So, hello, Veronica, Sandy, Colleen, Trisha. Glad you all are here to talk about death today, right? It is a topic that most of us will push away. We don't want to deal with death. And we actually came here to die. None of us can escape it. 100% of us are going to die. And it isn't hardly a, mm, at least a couple of months for me that go by that I'm not directly impacted by a death, um, whether it's somebody that I knew close to me or just a little further out, or it's, you know, something happening on a mass scale, which is happening more and more for us, or a pet, or just coming across like a dead bird or something. And when we handle death the way that we handle it as our, as our culture does, it becomes a great fear. It's hidden, it's pushed down, it's not a part of our ongoing life. And it is a part of life. So we're going to talk about it today. So hello, Trisha. Hi, Sandy. Glad you guys are here. So I noticed in my family when my mom died that we didn't use the word death. We didn't say mom's dead. <laughs> we said she's in a better place. <laughs> she passed on. She was a musician, so she's singing with the angels. I mean, we talked around it like crazy. But even before she got there to her, um, uh, what killed her, <laughs> we didn't let her die. So she was really dead five years before we allowed her to die. She had a non-resuscitate um, uh, protocol, and somehow, I guess it was my dad, <laughs> put in a feeding tube, agreed to put in a feeding tube. I don't really know that. We just all went to lunch one day, and we came back, and Mom had been taken down and had a feeding, feeding put, tube put in. Then she came back, and those five years that she was um, – still alive before she actually died, were excruciatingly painful for her and very difficult for the rest of the family to handle because of um, what was happening to her. So I, I'm really perplexed about it, why we don't make death a part of our life, but all I know for me is that I have been studying and practicing yoga for 30-some years and death is a part of the practice. It comes at the end. It's called Shavasana. Lots of people say rest, but the translation for Shavasana is corpse pose. So we get to practice dying every time we do our movement practices. That moment at the end where we're just in stillness and in rest is the practice of death. And when we do this, we get so used to dying. We get so used to letting go that we become more and more comfortable with it. But we have to move that to consciousness because the way the West, the West handles yoga is they don't, they call it rest and they don't talk about what it really is. So we're talking about that today. Oh, hey, Jacqueline. Hello. I work in veterinary hospice. Oh, wow. I didn't even know they had veterinarian hospice, euthanasia, very excited for this talk. I am so glad you're here. Hey, Natasha, 
yeah, so chime in about this because, um, you know, it, it's fear is, uh, our death is our greatest fear. When I talk to people, that is what gets them, is the fear of their own death or the fear of someone close to them dying. And if we do not get comfortable with this as a culture, we don't live as well because if we are not um, embracing our own death, we cannot embrace anyone else's. And in our culture, I see we get so attached to things, having to stay a certain way, people staying in our lives, that we don't just let go freely. And we've got to get here. We've got to get here. So I just attended this amazing workshop on death and dying when I was um, at the yoga therapy, therapy conference. And uh, the woman who taught it, she works at a um, cancer center and she deals with it all the time. And so her suggestions were, first of all, start saying dead, death, dying. Don't use indirect communication around it. So as we start to do it, just maybe just our little group starts to say it and not going around the subject, then we can help other people start to be more direct about death. The other thing is, is to be around death when it comes up in your world. Like if you are out like in your yard and there's a dead bird, don't go ooh, ooh, and just run away from it or tell someone else to go pick it up or, you know, whatever you do, be with it. Just sit there for a moment with that creature that was alive, just like you are alive in your being. That creature was alive in its body. Be with that. Be with that um, dead body. And as we get more and more able just to set with dead bodies, we'll get more comfortable with death. So my friend Natasha is on here. Hey, Natasha. And Natasha makes these beautiful sculptures. I'm going to actually go get it so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So Natasha makes these beautiful sculptures. And these wings are actually bird wings that she molds. So Natasha, I know, sits with death a lot. And that's what we are meant to do is to get really comfortable, sit with anything that you encounter that is dead, like maybe even a bug, a roach, you know, whatever comes into your, into your life and into your world and start to get comfortable with it. And then, Shavasana. So we are really going to talk about corpse pose today in the practice of it because I recommend that you guys start to practice this. You know, what I say is do your practices every day. I do. I can't miss them. If I miss a practice, my body starts to hurt again. And if I do my practices every day, my body doesn't hurt. My body doesn't hurt at all. Even in the places where I have injuries that you know, are pretty um, like chronic and <laughs> the moment I stop doing my practice, the pain starts to come back. But when I do my practice, no pain. So why wouldn't we live like this? I don't know. Do it every day. Let's see, Colleen. Um, interesting. My mother-in-law is starting to use those words. It upsets some of her kids and relieves others. Yeah. So I, too, have noticed that when someone is um, getting older, they may start to talk about it more, and it upsets people around them. Oh, no, you've got, a, you've got a long time to go. You don't need to worry about that or whatever. It's like, you know what? Any of us could go at any moment, and the older we go, that percentage is upping itself, right? So let's start talking about it and let's definitely allow people who are getting older or who are sick to talk about it and to make their plans and because it's so much easier i don't know if any of you've had the experience but when you've um, worked with someone who is dying and they're willing to talk about it and they're making their plans so much easier because then you know what to do 
once they're dead. I wanted to say once they passed, once they're dead. And when you have someone who won't talk about it, it's very difficult. You really don't um, know what they want or how they wanted things to be. And it's uncomfortable. And, you, and then there's all their stuff. And you don't know what to do with all their stuff. right? So let's get into this practice. I'll just check really quick. Oh, hey, Sandra, I'm glad you're here. Natasha, it helps to not put the death of another being into you by eating meat. I'm pretty comfortable with the words and ideas about death since my mother worked in hospice for so long. Yeah, yeah. So also, yeah, there's an idea of, um, you know, I'm in a whole food plant-based community, so there's a whole idea about not eating flesh. But even plants die. <laughs> so we have to get comfortable with death on a broad perspective. Animals, plants. I get sad when one of my plants dies. I don't know what about you guys, but I really, really do. Okay, so let's talk about this um, corpse pose. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to practice it. So I'm going to take you through a little practice to so join in. And I've got my mat here. And all we're going to do is lay down. So that's the beautiful part of it, right? It's really nice. And I have to keep my knees bent. You could take your legs out long. I'm running into something there, too, on the floor. But if I do that, my lower back can tend to hurt. So I keep my knees bent. And then to keep my knees or my inner legs from having to work, I take my toes in and my knees together. So my heels are out, my toes are in, and my knees are um, resting on one another. And then I roll my... Um, inner arms out, and I'm just tucking my shoulder blades underneath me so my heart is open. Nice. <sighs> my palms are up. And as I get here, and hopefully you're joining me, just begin to breathe deeply in and out of your belly. Up to your heart, off your heart. <sighs> Down into your belly. <sighs> And just feel for a moment that breath moving in and out of you. Now begin to focus on your feet. Pretend that your lungs are in your feet and breathe in and out of your feet. in consciously softening your feet and letting them melt into the earth, letting them go. And then breathe deeply in and out of your legs. Soften your legs and consciously release your legs, letting them go. And breathe deeply in and out of your pelvic bowl. Softening the contact, contents of your pelvic bowl, releasing your butt cheeks, feeling your sacrum, softening into the earth and letting go. and feel the breath moving your belly. It rises up as you inhale and drops down and back as you exhale. And soften, soften your belly. Let it go. Feel your chest rising up with the breath and dropping down as you exhale. Inhaling, it opens and expands. Exhaling, it releases. And allow that release to drop your chest, your upper back, deeply, deeply into the earth. Soften your arms, your hands, your shoulders. Let go. Let go. Releasing your neck. Open your jaw, 
Ha. Soften and release your jaw. Allow the back of your head to melt into the earth. Soften your eyes. And feel your brain becoming heavy and resting at the back of your skull. And allow all thoughts to become heavy and drop into the earth. And rest here now in this space of nothing. 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 And then when you're ready to come back into your body, begin to breathe deeply again, all the way into your feet and up to the top of your head and off the top of your head, down into your feet and begin to move. Just moving your body because you are still here, you are still in it, you just practice dying. <sighs> Uh, uh. And as you begin to move and breathe, just feel and notice. So relaxing to let go, right? Ah, oh, so nice. Hey, Valerie, nice that you're here with me. Sandy, yay. Molly Arnold, yay. Glad you guys are all with me today. So, we just practiced dying. <laughs> and it feels so good. So, those of you that did it, you might be like super, super, super relaxed, right? It's just such a nice way to let go. <sighs> and as we practice it more and more, we get more and more comfortable with that release and then more and more comfortable with our own death. And as we get more comfortable with our own death, we get more comfortable with others dying around us because we all are going to die. Everyone that we are around right now is going to die. Our pets are going to die, and we might as well practice and get used to it. So as we get more used to it, we can live more freely because we are not walking around with this big fear of death hanging over us. And as we become less afraid, then we can go and be with it in a more comfortable way. So let's see if anybody has anything else. Oh, Natasha said, so great. Hey, Phyllis Smith, I'm so glad you joined. So let's go out as a group and start talking directly about death. Be with it when you encounter it in your world. Don't just like scoop up those bugs and throw them in the trash. Pause for a moment, and you know that you are with a body that is a corpse. The being has left. The energy continues. We are energy. It continues. We don't really die. We transform. But this is what goes away, and we're so identified with our body 
we have to get more and more comfortable with letting it go. So be more with death and then practice your rest, your Shavasana at the end of each of your practices. And on the ageless movement practices, if I stop before you um, and get up before you're done with your practice of death, pause it, you're in control and stay there and practice dying for as long as you need to. Thank you so much for being with me. Yay. We'll see you next Friday for Free Flow Friday. Thank you. Thank you. Go live really good free from the fear of death.